Hi, my name is Andrew Kudravtsev and today I'm going to show you something which is rather unusual for the OD environment. Uh, some of you probably have heard about the early uh, uh, PC sequencer called Voyatra. And a Voyager sequencer was very, very early 90s, which is really designed for the early PC computers. Not running in a graphical screen, it's, you're actually running it in a text screen. But it's known for robustness MIDI uh, implementation, and it's really, really one of the very fast sequencers that you can, like you can program pretty quick. Uh, unfortunately, it's only PC compatible. And uh, unless someone figure out there is no way to run that for Macintosh or run it on something which is not a PC. Today I'm going to show you how you can run it on actual on the Mac. I have here a uh, Macintosh uh, Power Mac uh, running with OS 9. And this is just my test computer, which uh, I happen to put inside um, uh, another Mac uh, case. It's obviously not original, but the board that's inside it is 7200, which is based out of a power PC. So that's one of the first generation that Apple transitioned from a 68K Motorola to a power PC. And this board, this mouse board, uh, basically is running OS 9 with a hard disk, with a floppy drive too. But this system has very special additional board, which sits here, this really big one. And Apple used to call it PC com compatibility card. Basically, it's a complete PC on the board, which goes into a PCI slot. And from that slot, it actually communicates to your Apple computer. And from that slot, it gets the access to the storage, get access to some ports. Depends how you configure that. But what you need to know, that's a complete PC um, based on the Intel Pentium 166 megahertz, and it has Sound Blaster implementation on this board, which is MPU compatible. So, uh, what I did here is basically I'm running this computer right now, that's a screen from this computer. And the way you start PC compatibility uh, board is just there is one simple program called PC Setup. And in this program, you configure what is your boot drives, what's your uh, COM port forwarding settings, what's your monitor and how you basically uh, manage the sharing of the data between these two computers. So it's really designed to be extremely flexible. It's, it's all integrated. It's not something like you have uh, one computer inside another computer and they act separately. No, actually, they act all together. And as soon as you boot to the OS 9, all you need in order to go to the PC is just a key combination, and immediately you get to the DOS which I've obviously put over the uh, partition that I mounted. But what's important to know that in order to get it working, you have to have a special cables working. So there is a video cable coming off the PC compatibility card, which is very hard to find. So basically I solder it my own. And this cable is connects to the onboard video port on the motherboard and then goes to the card and then it connects to the monitor. That's how it, it works all together, so you have a way on the same screen go between the uh, uh, PC card and uh, and Macintosh um, uh, video part card. Also, it has a real game port here, and inside this real game port, I do have a standard media adapter for the game port, which allows to basically to use it with a standard MIDI equipment. And what I figure out that actually it's a fully MIDI compatible because it runs Sound Blaster 16, um, original one, and it has all the uh, settings that is needed to get everything right. So let me show how it's working. In order to get, uh, obviously, Voyager started, uh, you have first to run the driver. And in order to run the driver, you need to select it from appropriate hardware. In that case, it's just a Sound Blaster driver, and so it's all running, and then we just a start sequencer. It takes about a minute to start. It depends on the computer, what you actually have. I think at that point, actually, Voyager is testing the clock of the system in order to determine the timings, the proper timing settings, because I did a couple of experiments with some slowdown programs and uh, figure out that sometimes it can be faster, even on the slower computers, to start it. 
So that's how Voyager Sequencer is, well, basically is looking. Uh, what I have here, I have just a very basic MIDI keyboard, which is here, connected uh, to this uh, MIDI port, so it's only input, I'm not playing any audio, I'll do that later. But just to show you that it's actually working, so we arm the track uh, on the record, and start recording, play some notes here, stop, edit, and voila, so we have all the notes recorded here, so everything is actually recorded and MIDI is fully working. Uh, what I also want to show you, how it's actually working on the output, and actually there is some myth about why Voyager Sequencer is really that stable in terms of the MIDI implementation, and I did some tests uh, back and forth, I'm doing that for all my MIDI gears here, just to determine what is the stability of a MIDI clock, what's a jitter, which determines that stability, what's delay, and one of the biggest helpers, to me at least, in this, is this small box called MIDIGAL, designed by, well, it has a long history, but this board is produced by Peter Kwitek, uh, and distributed by him. I bought it as a kit, just quickly soldered it, and this board is capable to do, deliver different things, but it's currently in the settings of the MIDI clock firmware, so it's a special firmware, which is designed to improve the MIDI clock, but also as a part of this design, it also has a capability to measure the jitter of the current MIDI clock which is coming. So what I'm going to do, I'm just power on this board, great, and um, we are going to uh, set this board to measure the jitter of our clock. And I will show you uh, what is actual jitter when you run a Voyager here. Uh, in order to do that, in order to do so, first you need to have a settings for um, for the sync output, and then you just press a play, and uh, and then you start measuring. And this line below, well, th that one is obviously your BPM, it's currently set to 120, it shows that it actually it's not 120, it's 120.2, and 1.8% is your deviation. So comparing to something that you may find in a, like in modern DAWs, like in a, in a standard environment today, this is actually a pretty big jitter on a MIDI clock. But uh, what I found that it's not actually the way what determines your stability or tightness of your arrangement. Actually, your MIDI nodes determine that. And in case of Voyager implementation, what you will find that um, MIDI jitter of the MIDI clock is actually different from a jitter of MIDI nodes. So that's, I'm not sure what's the real, what's the reason about that, uh, but let me show you some example. I created a file uh, just to, to, to make it quick. Uh, and that file called sync, basically inside this file, I'm sending uh, one eight note. Uh, it doesn't matter what note actually you send, uh, it can be random or, or it can be like any. Uh, and the MIDI gal, it has an option to run actually to, to make a measurement not of the clock, but to make measurements of the notes. And once we set that, um, Let's hit the play, and it takes some time to do the uh, measurement because now it basically it measures the time between uh, one eight, so it has collect enough one eight in order to measure that properly and uh, and calculate the uh, difference between them and then can calculate the jitter. But what you see here is basically them running the Voyager uh, basically the same, uh, the only difference that now I'm measuring the uh, jitter of my note, but you see that the deviation, the jitter is actually, is less than 0 0.0, uh, well, 5%. So that is extremely minimum jitter, and based on my test in a, in a standard DAW, you cannot achieve it in a standard DAW, like in, under regular Mac OS today or under regular Windows today. So I think uh, I just want to show these two cool ideas that first you can run it and you can uh, 
enter and exit from uh, from Voyager back and forth between your Mac computer. And then I want to share this investigation for the MIDI jitter because I found it's cool. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot. See you next.